Good afternoon, Saints and Prayer Warriors. To God be the glory. It's time once again for another 60 second National Prayer Call broadcast with your host and facilitator, Deacon Robert Washington Jr. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting on a brand new day journey. We thank you for our health. We thank you for our strength. We thank you for our friends and loved ones, family, friends, and our loved ones. Lord, we thank you for just being you all by yourself. We thank you for just being your son, your son Jesus Christ, and down on the cross for permission of all our sins. So, we go by our pres- president and vice president, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Bless their families, bless their families, and their cabinet today. So, go by the ones that tested positive for COVID 19. Go by the ones on ventilators and in hospitals or rehab facilities. Go, go, go by, Lord, go by our health care workers. We're doing a great work for your team on a daily basis. We thank you for that. Lord, we need more love and unity in this world. The love is going completely white coat. Lord, is this land is spiritually sick. And even spiritual yes, all you can provide that God. Lord, we thank you just being you all by yourself. Lord, help hold our state and local officials accountable and responsible for their actions. Let them know you are in complete and total control, God. And God, what is the what is lesson, lesson we're going to see on today? Bless our message and our messenger on today. I pray to all blessings in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen and amen. And now we turn over to the hands of Bernard G. King Sr. for teaching of uh, the God's word. God bless you, Deacon Robs uh, Jr. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that powerful prayer. What a blessing it is to be found in the house of the Lord. One more time. This is the day. Yes, it is. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. I was glad when they sent unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to encourage the body of Christ. I want to encourage simply the word church. Um, Most of you, maybe perhaps at least some of some of you have already heard um, of the passing of our beloved prayer warrior, Sister Violet Williams, Clinton, Louisiana. She was a part of our family. She was a part of our leadership staff. She, she serves a part of our leadership here at Simply The Word Church. Amen. Part of our greeter ministry. And um, she was all in, you know, she was all in. She was committed completely, totally, fully committed to Simply The Word Church. And, um, and the Lord has spoken amen the lord has spoken and uh mother chris and i have already had great fellowship today in that regard we will celebrate the life that's how we do it here amen simply the word church um we will celebrate her life on friday morning this friday morning coming two days from today be the will of god we will dedicate that service that worship service to sister violet williams Amen. And she has gone on to be with the Lord. And um, she was a very, very um, integral part of our ministry. Uh, She traveled with us everywhere we went. Amen. Houston, uh, California, you know, all of that, Los Angeles. She was with us, Hammond, New Orleans, uh, even on our ministry assignments. uh, Praise God. uh, Outreach ministry assignments locally. Sister Violet Williams was with us. She was the life of the party. (laughs) Amen. Amen. And to know her, to love her. And we're going to miss her. Truly, truly miss her. Uh, But uh, God knows what's best. Is that right? God knows what's best. Amen. And we that are saved, uh, we have to know what to do when, when, when death occurs. We need to know what to do. We need to know who to trust in, who to lean on to believe in and um and amen the blessing is uh, when the individual dies in jesus amen because the bible said blessed are the dead which die in the lord henceforth now and forevermore they shall rest from their labor but their works shall follow them their works shall follow them so so we are excited even in the midst of our tears in the midst of our sweet memories that we have uh, to hold on to 
Uh, amen. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on because we, we're not officially celebrating our life today, but uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have to say this. Um, I, I never forget, I think on at least two occasions, um, Mother Chris and I had to come together and um, take care of the business side of this ministry. Amen. And Sister Violet was with us. Sister Violet was with us. She was right there with us. The three of us in, in the truck together, um, you know, she just wanted to be in the company. She wanted to be in the house. And, um, and we shared with her and visiting her son and all of that. <clears throat> and, um, and Sister Violet was Sister Violet. Amen. She, she didn't try to, to be anybody else but Sister Violet William. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And she didn't try to change, uh, amen, herself uh, to, to meet anyone else's expectations. So we just, we just thank the Lord. We thank God for the time that, um, the time that we have had with Sister Violet Williams. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so also I want to say this, in a, as a part of our three-day celebration coming up, um, we will be uh, paying special tribute to those uh, who have gone on. Amen. And you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. I'm not, I can't even remember which day it's going to be, but uh, so you just show up all three days, you know, you're not going to miss it. Tell your neighbor, come all three days, <laughs> come all three days and you're not going to miss it. Amen. And so now uh, we are not, of course, we are not playing for Sister Violet to be a part of that. Uh, but, you know, that just goes to show you that the Lord can change your plans. Mm. Hello, somebody. The Lord can change your plans. If you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. He'll laugh in your face. God is so powerful, he can change our plans. And so now we will, of course, add Sister Violet's name to the list of sweet, sweet memories of those um, that have, you know, now she's in, in, in that group with Deacon McGarry Sensley. She's in the group with uh, Mama Mildred Gainhart, Mama Ruby Causey, Hammond, Louisiana, Gainhart, New Orleans, and, and uh, Sister Anna Marie Slidell, Louisiana, and uh, Sister Emma Green. Come on, somebody. And the list goes on. There's a few more I'm missing, but, but we're just we're excited today. and We're encouraging the Lord, and I want you to be encouraged as well as we uh, go on in the days uh, to come. Amen. It's time for the word of the Lord. This is, I believe, part number 65 of our series entitled The Great Deception, the book of, De of the book of Genesis. Welcome, Facebook family. Welcome, prayer line family. Welcome, YouTube family. Let's go to the word of God. All right. Mm. Let's go to the word of the Lord because the Lord is my shepherd. Mm. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadows grass. And he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hand. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. Sister Violet is now safe. That's why I'm safe. Don't have to worry about the coronavirus. That's why I'm safe in his, his arms. Oh. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bless his name. Woo! Bless his name. I say bless his name. Ah! Oh, my, 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 my. We were talking the other day at the church, Sunday. Um... And the name of Brother Ennis Hollins came up. We were talking about 
uh, we have a major project going on at the church and, uh, and, and some, the members know what I'm talking about. Those who are listening to me, we have a major project going on at the church and, and, and I made the statement about Brother Ennis Holland. I said, I said, Lord, I miss him. Lord knows I miss that man. Amen. At the church, I miss him because there are certain things that um, he would, you know, he would just take care of, you know. And and um, and then I turned around and made another statement. I'm going, I'm moving on after this. I promise. I made this statement. I forget who I was talking to. It was inside the church Sunday, and I said this. I said, Brother Ennis Holly would not come back here if he could. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Mm. My, 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 my. Don't have to wear a mask in heaven. Ah! Ha! Amen. You ain't got to worry about social distance. Y'all missing me. Let's move on. Oh my God, let's move on. Let's move on. Woo, Lord, no more, no more trips to the doctor. Y'all with me? No more medicine to take. No more sickness. Oh, God have mercy. We're walking through here with chapter 44. Chapter number 44, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Chapter number 44. And we are... Uh, we, we, we finished yesterday morning with verse number four. And um, in that, we, we learned that uh, Joseph was really trying to be sure. Really, he was really trying to be certain that his brothers had truly repented in their hearts. We talked about repentance. We talked about um Repentance. We talked about what happens, uh, what repentance is, and what's involved in re when you truly repent of your sins. If you really are truly sorrowful and you repent uh, of your wrongdoing, amen, uh, it occurs first in your hearts. See, what the church, listen, we need to be sure that we're not offering lip service. See, lip service only goes so far. Lip service goes from your mouth to somebody else's ears. Y'all not, y'all not with me today. Stay with the preacher. Stay with me. Stay with me. That's it. Lip service goes from your mouth to somebody else's ears. But when repentance, true repentance, take place, it happens in the heart. Amen. Somebody. So, so you don't have to really shout it from the top of the mountain. Uh, amen. But amen. If you've really repented, if you, oh my God, if you repented of your sins, come on, somebody. Amen. God will get the glory. That's real change. Tell somebody that's real change. Amen. That's real change. You ain't got to, you ain't got to make no show and all that. And, and you get, get in front of a whole lot of people and put on a show. And you know how some folk do. And, <laughs> You know, amen. Because because you're gonna be the same around people, and even when you're not around people. Hello. Tell your neighbor, God sees all. God knows all. Amen. And so Joseph needed to be sure. And the reason he needed to be sure because of the enormity of the sin that these brothers had committed against him in particular, amen. Now, excluding Benjamin, because we referenced on yesterday morning that Benjamin is the baby brother. Benjamin was not even born when the brothers sold Joseph into slavery, amen. And so Benjamin's sitting back over, Benjamin's over on the side sitting, Benjamin's saying, that's y'all. <laughs> Benjamin said, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So here it is, verse number five. It's not this it in, um, it's not this it in which my Lord drinks and whereby indeed he divines. Uh, you have done evil in so doing. Watch this. And he overtook them 
And he spoke unto them these same words. All right. Uh, they said unto him, wherefore says my Lord these words, God forbid that your servants should do according to this thing. Behold the money, you know, we've been talking about the money in the bag and all that in the sack. Um, amen. You ain't been coming to church, you're going to be kind of lost right here. <laughs> amen. Tell you, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you been here? <laughs> By the look on your face, you ain't been coming to church. Amen. So, so, so here it is, verse number, uh, where we are. Verse number seven, and they said unto him, wherefore says my Lord these words, God forbid that your servants should, uh, should do according to this thing. Behold the money which we found in our sacks mouths, mouths. We brought again unto you out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out uh, of your Lord's house silver or gold, okay? With whomsoever, of your servants it be found, both let him die. And we also would be my Lord's bondsmen. Now, we need to we need to pause for a moment and mention the fact that they are right and they are wrong. Somebody say, how can they be both? <laughs> they, amen, how can they be both right and wrong? Well, well, they are, they are, they are right and they're wrong. They are right in, in that they did not steal the cup because they didn't but they are wrong in that it's not in one of the sacks because it is. Stay with me. He said, now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant. Now here this word servant means slave, okay? And you shall be blameless, okay? So what we see here is the same steward, you know, we had been talking about the steward. The steward had been introduced to the canon of scripture. Uh, a couple of series, a couple of settings ago, uh, teachings ago, and this same steward, steward, okay, who has greeted them in the past, all right, is now standing right before them. Y'all with me? As it regards the cup in particular, as it regards the cup, that's the reason he's standing before them, as it regards the cup that is supposedly missing. Amen. And he's the one who had placed the cup in Benjamin's sack so he knew exactly where it was. All right. Then they speedily, verse 11, took down every man his sack to the ground and, and opened every man his sack. Verse 12, and he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Amen. Because that's where he put it. Stay with me. Verse 13. Then they rent their clothes and, and loaded every man his ass and returned to the city. Verse 14, and Judah, okay, Judah is reintroduced here. Judah and his brethren. Very interesting that the text says Judah and his brethren. All right, watch this. Came to Joseph's house. Remember, Judah was one, was the one who said to the brothers, Years ago, remember, uh, when they had put him in the pit to die, um, Judah was the one that spoke up and said, let's not leave him there. Let's take him out and sell him into slavery. So God used Judah and Reuben, Reuben being the oldest, God used both of them to spare the life of Joseph. Stay with me. Amen. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. All right. Um, verse 15, and Joseph said unto them, what deed is this that you have done? Okay. Do you not know that a man as I can certainly divine? All right. This is going to open up, the next verse is going to open, help open up 15. 16 is going to help open up 50. You with me? Everybody got it. It's all probably got to keep reading. Amen. You just got to keep on reading. God's going to give it to you. Tell your neighbor, but don't stop reading. Just keep reading. Watch this. And Judah said, what shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? All right. Now, a whole lot of questions in there, didn't it? <laughs> Uh, God has found out the iniquity of your servants. 
Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. So Judah is distressed here, okay? Um, the distress of Judah and the others shows us that they were no longer in their heart the same men that they once were. You, you would tell your neighbor, the, the, the day ought to come when you make a change. Come on. We don't like to hear that kind of talk. Amen. Come on. Amen. The day ought to come. Amen. Tell your neighbor, that don't have to fool all your life. Hello, somebody. Been there, done that, let's change. Amen. Come on. You know, we're wrong here, simply the word. Now, you know, we don't, you know, this is a whole, this is a different kind of church now, I'm telling you. Some of you. <laughs> Man, come on! Or come a day where we just make a change. Hello, for the better. Amen. So it shows us that 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 these guys had change. Some change had taken place in their hearts. Some repentance had taken place in their hearts. God had taught them. I may know the Lord is the greatest teacher. Mm. The Holy Spirit, amen, is the greatest teacher. Amen. Hello, somebody. And, and he alone can produce um, in us our true sense of, of, rec of recognition of sin. God can do it by his spirit. And, and he can bring us to a point where we totally submit unto him. Amen. And so here, the iniquity that Judah is speaking of is, is, is that, y'all see the word iniquity in uh, verse, verse 16. He said, God has found out the iniquity of your servants. This is Judah speaking, one of the brothers. This spe specific iniquity that Judah is speaking of was that of the selling of that brother into slavery so many years before. Y'all with me? That was a great sin to do that. Amen. They sold him into slavery thinking they would never see him again. They, they basically wrote him off. Come on. Hello. They wrote him off. Amen. But God has a way. Hello. God has a way uh, of, of bringing things full circle. Mm, yeah, yeah, he'll do it. He'll do it. God, God, God is awesome in orchestrating the affairs of our lives. And, and God has a way. God is so, oh my God, God is so powerful. Uh, amen. He's all seeing. He's all knowing. God is the only one that can see the full picture. We have, to some degree, narrow vision. Amen. But God can see everything. God knows what's going to happen tomorrow this time. God knows what's going to happen next year and the year after that. God knows right now. So Judah is speaking of the specific sin, of this iniquity of them selling their brother into slavery, which was Joseph. Amen. And, and so um, verse 17, and he, that's Joseph, said, Joseph said, God forbid that I should do so. So what he is saying is that he has no desire to keep all the brothers. Only the one in whose sack the cup was found. And we know who that was because the Bible just told us it was Benjamin. Amen. All right. Uh, amen. Okay. Uh, the B portion of 17. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. Other words, be my slave. And as for you, Get up in peace, get you up in peace unto your father. 18, then Judah came near unto him and said, oh, my Lord, let your servant, I pray you, speak a word in my Lord's ears and let not your anger burn against your servant for you are even as Pharaoh. This chapter right here, my brothers and sisters, make a note, grab your pen, your pad, make a note. This chapter right here, 
contains one of the most um, passionate pleas ever made by one man to another. And that is in this particular case, Judah making a passionate plea unto his brother Joseph. He's speaking from his heart. Amen. I want you to highlight this verse. Highlight this very, very passion. We see passion all in this. All right. And the only one that can deliver us and grant us true passion is God our Father. Amen. All of us have passion with certain things. You know, my passion for something may not be the same level of passion that you have for that same thing. But all of us, watch this here. I'm, I'm speaking of worldly stuff right now. But as it relates to the spirit of God, as it relates to the things of God, all of us should have the same passion, really. Amen. All of us. All of us. If you're a Christian, I don't care if you were saved today and I was saved yesterday. Come on. <laughs> you know. Or, or, or amen. Or I was saved today and you were saved 10 years ago. Our passion for God should still be the same. Now, we may be on different levels of learning about God, okay? We may be on, you know, see, I do my hand up and down. We may be on different levels of learning, you know, because you've been saved longer than me. So you've been in the word. Come on. You can't expect folk that just got saved yesterday to know to know the whole Bible. See, we, we need to stop that. We, <laughs> come on, talk to me. Amen. 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 They're just starting on this Christian journey. Praise God. So we must be patient with them. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Y'all remember that? We got to be patient. God is always, God is, God is constantly working on us. He, the Bible said, Paul said, he that has begun a, a, a good work, come on, shall continue, amen, to the day of redemption. So uh, verse 19, my Lord asked his servant saying, have you a father or a brother? 20. And we said unto my Lord, we have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loves him. 21. And you said, and you said unto your servants, bring him down unto me, that I may set my eyes upon him. 22. And we said unto my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father, for if he should or if he should leave his father, his father would die. And you said, they just recapping, you know, conversation really. And you said unto your servants, except your younger brother come down with you. Remember when Joseph said that to them, you shall see my face no more. 24, and it came to pass when we came up unto your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. 25, and our father said, go again and buy us a little food. And we said, they, they are continuing to recap the conversation that has already occurred, all right? And I'm kind of running through this because we, we that have been, you know, we that have been here, we know, we know this because we talked about this. We said we cannot go down for uh, uh, if I, except our youngest, youngest brother be with us. They, they're referencing Benjamin, okay? Always keep in mind, Benjamin is the youngest. And um, your servant, my father said unto us, you know that my wife bore me two sons, 28, and the one went out from me. And I said, surely he is torn in pieces. And I saw him not since, 29. And if you take this also from me and mischief befall him, you shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave, 30. Now, therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life. 31, it shall come to pass when he sees that the lad is not with us, that he will die and your servants shall bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father with sorrow to the grave. 32, for your servant became surety for the lad unto my father saying, if I bring him not unto you, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. 33. Now, therefore, I pray you, let your servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman. That, that is, that mean a slave. Also, 
uh, the word uh, servant referenced in this context um, means slave. To my Lord and let the lad go up with his brethren. Uh, get ready y'all. I just realized we're closing out another chapter. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. And all of that, those last probably eight to 10 verses was basically a recap of the conversation that they had previously had that was laid out, uh, initiated by Joseph unto the brothers on their journey. Clap your hands, give God praise everybody for the completion of chapter number 44. Bless the name of the Lord. God bless all of you. God bless all of you. Let's keep rolling. We're on a good roll here. 20 uh, verse uh, uh, chapter 45. Y'all ready? Verse number one. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them who stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brothers. Y'all with me? While Joseph made himself known unto his brothers. Up until now, they, uh, the, the Lord by his spirit had not allowed uh, the brothers to see the fullness of who Joseph really was. And we talked about that. We kind of talked about that before, how that, how that God will hide you from your enemies until the right time. He'll do it. He'll do it, y'all. He'll do it. The prophet Zechariah, in his writing, said, speaking of a coming day, he said, and that shall look upon me whom they have, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Amen. Of which this scene of Joseph and his brothers is a type of, of course, no, Joseph is a type of Christ. All right. And so we know also it points us to Jesus, points to the cross, because we know that Jesus Christ was uh, pierced. Um, he was pierced in his side. He was riveted in his feet. Amen. He was, his nails was hanging. His, 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 his hands were nailed to the cross, right? Okay. Verse two, and he wept aloud and the Egyptians and the, and the house of Pharaoh heard. Okay. Now these Egyptians who had just left the room, they could not help uh, overhearing um, uh, the loud uh, crying, all right, uh, of Joseph. Okay, and so uh, they 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 reported everything to Pharaoh. Look at verse three. Joseph said unto his brothers, "I am Joseph." So now he's revealing. The Lord is 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 causing Joseph to reveal to his brothers who he is, amen, who he is. He says, he's their brother, um, amen. So this is a great announcement here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna rush through this, this particular portion of scripture. This is a great turn in, in scripture here. Write that down. It's a very significant turn in the canon of scripture because up until now, the Lord had not allowed them to see the fullness of who Joseph was, all right? And so, uh, so uh, what, what is, okay, I am Joseph, uh, does my father yet live? You see that? And his brothers could not answer him for they were troubled in at his presence. Mm. In other words, they were flabbergasted. They were outdone. They were shocked. Mm. My God. They were in amazement. Y'all with me? That's what they were troubled. They were in amazement at his presence. And it's going to be the same way at the second coming of Christ. Israel the reaction of Israel is going to be the same at the second coming when Jesus says, I am he who once was, 
who still is and always will be. Lord, have mercy. Are y'all with me? Stay with me. Amen. Because I, I, I'm a firm believer. I, I really believe, I really believe that uh, a lot of people don't think that 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 the time is running out. Now I'm I'm, I'm I want to I want to preface that I I, I want to go further. I, I, listen, um, I, I'm talking on both sides now. Watch this. Uh, on one side, I'm speaking. I'm referencing those who are unsaved and and don't want to have nothing to do with God. All right, that I'm talking about them. But I'm also talking about some of us who are in the church. All right, some of us who are saved. Amen. And you know they got some folk that's saved, but but they still playing with God. Amen. They really deep down now they go to church. They, they you know being all up in Bible study and stuff. You know, Amen. Uh, and all of that. And they believe Jesus died, and you know they saved, and he, you know and all that stuff. Uh, and they coming back. And they, 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 they believe he's coming back. But 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 here's the thing, they don't they don't believe that he's coming back anytime soon, so they're not getting in a hurry. As grandmama say to get their business fit. Amen. Come on. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Amen. Still lying and backbiting. Come on. Still treating people any kind of way. What the Bible say, do unto others. We, we forget that. We forget that verse, don't we? <laughs> we don't want to have nothing to do with that verse. The Bible said, do unto others. Don't do them how they do you, but do them as you would have them do you. Woo! Are y'all with me? Amen. We just think we can treat folk any kind of way. Talk to people any kind of way, you know, and just disrespect people and just, you know, and all that and, you know, don't show love and come on. What Jesus said in John 13, a new commandment I give you. He was getting ready to check out of here. Come on. He was getting ready to go. He said, hold up. You got to see the you got to see the humor in that. Jesus, it's almost as if you know Jesus was almost almost at the end of his earthly ministry here. You know, and 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 come on, because you got to you got to remember now. In, in the next chapter, he said, "Let not your heart be troubled." <laughs> Woo! Come on, you believe in God, believe also. He said, "In my Father's house." Y'all remember? But in chapter thirteen of John, he said, "Hold up." Got one more to give you. Woo! Love everybody. He said, he said, love everybody. And, 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 and look, he knew, he knew there was going to be one of them jokers to say, how, how should we love everybody? So, so to fix that, he said, he said, love everybody as I have loved you. That, 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 y'all, come on, it's in there, y'all. It's in your Bible. Verse 34 and 35. It's in your Bible. And, and he knew, he knew there would be another person over on the other side of the church talking about, well, um, uh, what, for what, what's, what's, what's the purpose? So he fixed that too. He said, he said, he said, by this, May men know you as my disciple. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Why? Because you have love one for another. See, the mistake we make, and, I, and I'm so serious with you, I believe that they got a lot of folk that are heavily concerned. They are concerned about going to heaven 
but they are not so concerned about being seen as a disciple before they get to heaven. Good God, let me go. Oh, I got oh, oh y'all. Just do anything. I wish I had. Just treat folk any kind of way, man. Jesus said to Peter, remember they was walking along and, 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 and Peter, Peter was a rascal now. Peter was, boy, Peter was something. <laughs> Peter was so jealous and stuff. Come on, it's in your Bible. I'm not making, Peter, see all the disciples had good and bad, just like you and I. We got good with us, we got bad, right? Can you at least agree on that? Okay, all right, huh? Say it again. Okay, gotcha. All right. So, so one day they were walking. Peter looked around and saw John on the other side. So he leans over to Jesus and says, what is he doing with us? It's in your Bible. So Jesus, Jesus responded to Peter and said, what, what does that have to do what does him being with us have to do with you being with me? Whew. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. See, we worry about the wrong thing. I wish I had help in here. I wish I had a witness. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, my God, my God. Mm. My God. Jesus said, Jesus said, Peter, if you love me, Feed my sheep. He, he said, he said, matter of fact, let me ask you, do you love me? <laughs> he said, yeah, I love you. You know I do. He said, well, if you really do, feed my sheep. Then Jesus asked him again, you know, do you love me, Peter? Peter said, yes, sir. You know I do. He said, well, if you do, Feed my lamb. In other words, Peter, uh-oh, y'all in simply the word. You in simply the word. Watch out. Here it is. In other words, Peter, shut up about John. Just walk with me. Y'all, y'all know what happened. You know, he's so busy trying to kick John out the group. And John was the only one that went all the way to the cross with him. Come on. Peter, where were you? Come on. You in the head, man. You peeping around the corner and stuff. Come on, man. People do that today when you're in trouble. They want to know what's going on with you so they can go back and tell the story, but they're not going to stand with you and support you and stay, say, listen, I'm going to listen. If you go down, I'm going. Come on. Nobody don't want to do that, but they will. They'll follow you from a distance. There are people around the corner. Y'all missing the preacher here because they want to be able to take the story back. They want to take it back and tell, oh, guess what, man? I saw it with my own eyes. But don't follow me from a distance. Help me. Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. Boy, there's some stuff here. I'm still in the tax now. I'm, 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 listen, y'all. I wish I had. Oh, this is something here. This is a lesson, though. Y'all hear me? Tell your neighbor this is a lesson here. Amen. And there are those even today that um, they 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 want they want you dead. They they don't want you around. They they just you know as these brothers had sold Joseph into slavery, they they didn't want him around. They you know, they, they wanted him gone. They wanted him out of the picture. But tell your neighbor, if God be for you, who then can be against you? 
the devil in hell. Come on. Amen. Can't wipe you out. I wish I had. Oh, my God. Amen. In John chapter 10, the Lord said it. The Lord said, look, whoever's in my hand, can't nobody pluck them out. Amen. If, you, if you're truly in the hand of God, man, you're in the best hand there is to be in. Somebody say better than all state. <laughs> Amen. I guess they got that right. Better than all state. Amen. Just make sure that your hand is in the hand of God. Amen. Don't worry about, don't worry about the haters. You know, there's always going to be haters, man, until Jesus comes. I got them too. You know, got, you know, naysayers and haters, you know, and all. we all got them, y'all. Come on, y'all stop acting funny. Everybody got them. Some you know of, some you don't. <laughs> and But the ones you know of, you got to make sure you know they're a hater. You got to make sure you love them, man. You got to love them. Amen. You got to do it. Joseph loved these brothers. They were haters. His brothers, write it down. His brothers were haters. <laughs> But use your haters as elevators. Type it in. Use your haters as elevators. God will do it. He will cause them to raise you high. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Because if if the brothers had not sold him into slavery in Egypt, he would have never been over there with Pharaoh and Pharaoh would not have appointed him to the position of authority where he was in. You with me? So Joseph had to be sold into slavery in order to be where he was. See, y'all look at these little situations y'all go through and say, oh my God, why am I going through this? Why, why they don't like me? Oh my, why are they talking about me? Why this? Why everybody crying? Everybody, oh my, oh Lord Jesus. Y'all know what I mean. Everybody got a sob story. Now I got a few sob stories myself. I, hey, come on. But I made up my mind. I, oh my, I made up, I'm going with God. Hello, somebody. Amen. Because here's the thing. You can't change people, but you surely can change yourself. Amen. You pray for them. Come on. Can't change them, but pray for them. Let God do the changing. And that's what we can mess up. We try to change people. You can't change nobody, man. Change yourself. Hello. Make sure you're walking right. Woo. Make sure you do what's right. I'm talking to myself too. Hey, you know, <laughs> might sound like I'm fussing. I'm, I'm, if I'm fussing, I'm fussing at me too. May, amen. I'm reminding us. Come on, y'all. Let's do what's right. Joseph did what was right. Although he had every right in the world. <laughs> Come on. To do what's wrong. You know, in a natural sense, he, oh my God. Oh my God, come on. Come on. Soul into slavery, come on. These jokers put him in a pit. Come on. You're in a pit, man, you can't come out. It ain't like you can just climb your way out and you know, you're down low in a dry, dark, low place. You just left there to die. Come on. But Joseph loved them. What verse are we in? Do y'all know? But I don't. <laughs> Amen. All right. Verse four, Joseph said unto his brothers, we're getting ready to go. Don't leave yet. Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. He said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. You see that? They don't know what to do. Amen. 
He said, I'm Joseph. He identifies himself. And he does it in such a way that there will be no misunderstanding. Amen. He didn't say, I'm Joseph. He didn't say, I'm your brother. He said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery, sold into Egypt. Amen. Verse 5, now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. It's in the Bible. Joseph had a heartbeat for God. Not just David. You know, we talk about David having a heart uh, going. Uh, he was after God's heart and all that. And that's true. But Joseph had a heartbeat for God, man. You, you, you got to see it. And, and not only for God, his heartbeat for God caused him to, to have a heartbeat for his brothers. See, that's why Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom. See, because, because listen, if you truly love the Lord, you're going to love people. It, it's just no way around it. You're going to love them unconditionally. I don't care what they do to you. And some folks say, when I'm through with you, I'm through with you. Y'all heard that before? Now, perhaps you yourself have used that. Shame on you. I'll tell you to your faith. Shame on you as a Christian. If you've used that. If you said, when I'm through with you, I'm, you know, there's something about Sally, you know. Some people say it in reference to other people, you know. Yeah, just something about Sally. Sally type of person, when she through with you, that's it. She through it. She want to have nothing to do. And Sally go to church every Sunday, be jumping and shouting and, and wearing out the carpet and hanging on the chandeliers and turning cartwheels and speaking in tongue and all that and talking about she don't want to, she don't want to deal with people. Come on, y'all. Let's go home. Y'all know we're in simple work. I'm just going to tell it like it is. Joseph loved God. God, and because he loved God so much, God took Joseph from the pit to the palace. He'll do it for you. And he'll do it for me. God elevated Joseph God took him out the pit and put him in the palace. Do y'all hear me? God removed him from trouble and placed him on the throne. Y'all better write some of this stuff down. I'm telling you now. Write it down. Amen. Amen. Joseph wants them to know clearly that he wants his brothers to know, you didn't sin against me necessarily. You sinned against God. Amen. See, and that's the thing we need to keep in mind is that we're not so much hurting the people necessarily. You're hurting God. You're going against God when you don't love folk and when you do wrong by people. First and foremost, you have sinned against God. Amen. Verse 6. For these two years has the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. Verse 7, God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. I think I'm going to, um, because there's a whole lot of meat in, in 7 and 8. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick a pen there. Y'all stick a pen there. And uh, so we have a few minutes to just talk a little bit before we get ready to get out of here. Uh, stick a pen after verse six. All right. Can we do that? All right. Bless the Lord. Love you all so very much. We want to invite you to become a part of our family here. Simply the word. Ten years celebration coming up in what? Two days. Wow. We've been talking about it. Two days. Friday night, seven o'clock. Music and more. People from all over the world is going. <sighs> Somebody say he exaggerated. No, I'm not. <laughs> just, just zoom in, baby. Zoom in. Zoom in. Tell your neighbor, zoom in with us. 
Simply the word church is a worldwide prayer ministry. We are a church without walls. You see it right there in the sign behind me. See that? We are a church without walls. We don't have walls here. There are no walls. There's no boundaries. We go where God sends us. We do what God tells us. And we say what God tells us to say. Lord have mercy. Amen. STW Ministry is the cash app. We lift an offer now. STW Ministry, Buck Glenn King. Right? That Glenn is G-L-Y-N-N. Got it? Buck Glenn King. Also, STW Ministry. All right? Um, go ahead and give, brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord has gone forward. And um, uh, we are commanded by scripture to give uh, whenever we receive the word of the Lord. Amen. First Corinthians chapter nine, if you want to check me on that, you can find validation to all that I have just said. First Corinthians chapter nine, Paul's letter, first letter to the church at Corinth. All right. The Bible said, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over. Shall the Lord cause men to give unto your bosom. Now, our seed toward our 10-year church anniversary, $110.10 minimum. That's our target. Brothers and sisters, let's do it um, at the very latest. We're going to do it this weekend. You can do it. Some, a lot of people have already done it, um, but, 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 but do that. That is what the Lord said do, not me. Amen. So let's do that. Sow that seed, $110.10. Get your t-shirts orders in, y'all. Have you gotten your order in? What you waiting on? <laughs> Amen. Amen. She, uh, Sister Boss need to know how many you want and your sizes. What you waiting on? 225-938-4762. Nine, Four seven six two. All right. All right. Get that in now. Get that in. I told y'all yesterday I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Pastor, can you y'all be called? See, the deadline is Monday now. And we're gonna be nice. We're gonna, we're gonna let you go all the way through Monday. All the way through Monday. Then Tuesday morning hit. That's it. That's it, baby. <laughs> Somebody be calling, Pastor, can you squeeze one in, one in for me? Is, you know, is it too late? Yes, it's too late, baby. I don't mean no harm. I love you. That's what I'm going to tell you. I love you. I'm telling you now. I love you. <laughs> but it's too late. Get your order in, baby. You can order as many as you want. They're $10. That's all. $10. We're not trying to make money. We just want to be a blessing. Amen. Um, to you. Amen. Everybody needs a now this is a special t-shirt. We've, we've, we've done t-shirts in the past during the 10 years, but this is a very special one because this is the 10 year celebration uh, commemorative t-shirt. So you want this shirt. You really want this one. Amen. You really want this one. So get, get as many as you want, get your orders in so that we can do what we need to do. The, the committee, I'm speaking on behalf of the committee. We had great fellowship on, think on yesterday, I believe with the committee. Amen. And um, um, planning committee, or not all of them, but uh, the main ones that's dealing with the celebration, I should say celebration committee, the planning of it. And um, Sister Tina Matthews, our chair, Houston, Texas, uh, Dr. L. Wanna Benny, Houston, Texas, Sister Carolyn Debos, New Orleans, Sister Boss, Baton Rouge. Um, listen, y'all, a lot of work has been put in and still being put in and uh, we want this to be great. The spirit of excellence will be on display. That's what we are looking for. I look at it like this. If we can give our best to the things of the world, and God knows we do, come on, come on, amen. Some of us get seasoned football, ticket to football, and don't miss a game. Be an uh, hour early. Come on, oh, don't look at me funny. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm the same way with certain things. When I want to do something, I just do it. And I'm going to give my best. 
we ought to do the same for God's work. Let's be on time. Music and more Friday night. Music and more Friday night. Uh, Saturday morning leadership conference. You don't want to miss that either. Um, be on time. Okay. Uh, Sunday, 2 p.m. is our super celebration when all of that will come together. Uh, the icing on the cake and to top it all off, Sunday, 2 o'clock, Zoom, Facebook Live, and this prayer line that we're on right now. Okay. So we're going to be on this. We'll be on this Facebook page we're on right now. And we'll be on this prayer line we're on right now. But we'll also be on Zoom. We're pushing everybody to Zoom. We're pushing everyone to Zoom. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do that. Um, in Jesus' name, all right? All of the, the dial-in, the, the Zoom link, all of that is, is there for you. We have it. Uh, get it now. Make sure you have it in place. Amen. So we'll be ready to rock and roll this weekend in Jesus' name. All right? All right? So let us let us move on here, brothers and sisters, uh, trying to let you go. Um, we want to say to the Hickory Grove family, we do have our family fellowship um, today. I'm going to talk about the family fellowship meeting. That is today. You know the time. Okay. Uh, we got our Bible study at 615. That's for everybody. At 615, we'll be back before you, God willing. And we want to say also to the members of our church uh, regarding our family focus uh, that we have every week. As we move further in the week, we let you know now, I always like to remind you now that we will have our family focus this week. Let's be on time for that. The Lord is good and the Lord is kind. The Lord is merciful. Thank you all so very much. I love you all in the Lord. I, I'm so looking forward to this weekend. Then I want y'all to be looking forward to it as well. Praise God. Let us keep in prayer the family of Sister Violet Williams. And uh, Friday morning, be the will of God. We will say more about her and we will celebrate her life um, a little bit more. I said a few things today, but we will be more extensive on Friday morning, 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. Amen. I thank God for Mother Chris that that shared this ministry with, with her good friend, Sister Violet Wim. They're close friends. They were very close friends for years. And she shared this ministry with Sister Violet. And Sister Violet said, I'm getting on board that gospel train. Hallelujah. Thank God for it. Thank God. Networking is so important with this type of ministry. Networking and, and, and communicating uh, the ministry with persons. If it had not been for Sister Nellie, we would not have Sister Carolyn Lebo as administrator. Now, that's the truth. Come on. Amen. That's why it's so important. Don't keep this ministry to yourself. Share it with some people. Invite them to call in. Invite them to be on Facebook. Invite them. Amen. Share the Facebook page. Share the YouTube channel. Share the prayer line information so that they too can become a part of our family. We want everybody a part of our family. Hello. Amen. Love you all. Let me let you go in Jesus' name. Let me let you go in Jesus' name. All right, time getting away a little bit. Amen. Bless the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up all of those who are here with us today and all of the families represented, God. We pray for peace and prosperity. We pray, God, if there's anyone sick among us that you would heal now in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up the family of Sister Violet Williams, and her children and grandchildren. I pray, dear God, that you would give them strength to go on in Jesus' name. And Lord, through this process of death, I pray that you would draw the family and others closer unto you. If there's anyone unsaved in the family, God, save their soul, even in the midst of this death, that they might run toward you saying, what must I do in order to be saved? God, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your name and we know that some good is gonna come out of it. Lord, we love you now and we say amen. All right, let me let y'all go. All right, I'll see you at 615. 
on the local church page, Icarus Grove and McEwen. Also the same prayer line you're on now, not this Facebook page. It will be on the local church Facebook page. God willing, I always say God willing. 615, there is a word from the Lord and you don't want to miss it. We've been dealing with, um, in our midweek services, we've been dealing with the ascension because, um, you know, and, and then on Sundays, we've been dealing with the 40 days. We're still in the midst of the 40 days. Keep that in mind. All right. The 40 day period between the resurrection and the ascension. But in our midweek services, we're talking about the ascension. So we have some new stuff for you tonight in regard to the ascension. And we want you to be a part of the lesson on today, 615. God bless you and God keep you is our forever prayer. If you meet me and forget me, it's okay. But if you meet Jesus and then forget him, you have missed out on what? A lifetime. All right, a lifetime. Facebook, type it in, a lifetime. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. I hear about life. A lifetime, I love you all. Sister Barb in the house, Brother Henry, Mother Chris, love you all. Love you all.